And uh, closing out today's presentation, uh, some, someone who I'm excited to meet and to see this presentation, uh, Cyril Tushi, who is the CEO of Sync Reality and is here to present uh, Transforming the Future of Spatial Content Creation for XR. So a warm round of applause, everyone. Cyril Tushi. Thank you. And the click here, uh, click. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Cyril Tushi from Berlin. We're here with the crew from Sync Reality from Berlin and flew in Sunday. And I'm a third time uh, at AWE. I'm really in love with this space, with this nerdism, with a focus on a niche of a niche, which might not be a niche after next Monday, uh, or we hope and dream further. Um, before I start, my background is 25 years of film production, directing, producing, classical story world building. I fell in love with VR in Hong Kong when I was doing a film about um, immortality uh, research gone wrong, and there I fell in love with location-based VR. I bet you know the, the Void and Dreamscape, this kind of stuff we built then as well. Because I loved about VR and AR, we don't differentiate anyway, that you can go to unknown spaces together and you touch the real world. And the emotions then are much higher than just the abstract in your room in the two by two meters. And that was so strong for me that we built something similar like, like the void with wind, heat, vibrating floor, trackers, backpack computers, very masochist because it was cable technology, bad, badly aging, super um, expensive. And we tried to scale it in China. Of course, everyone said, no, we, you, we don't pay 40 bucks for 20 minutes. And yeah, that, that was it. And the reason, that's, that was the reason for the birth of Sync Reality. And also, I'm happy also that the whole thing of auto-adaptive content um, is um, becoming a broader term. Um, but what I'm talking, because, for example, my, my, you know, my, um, Matt, me, Mike, Matt Miesnicks, yeah, he sold his company to a 60 AI to a Niantic. And he, two days ago, also said he will go from outside world into the inside world and is um, with, so he called it scan and play, that you scan your room and then you can um, make own games at home. And that was really a confir uh, confirmation that we are on the right track that we, because what we're building is for fur furthermore, uh, f first uh, for the inside. Uh, you, can, you can use it also at, at um, retail, but it's for inside. And let's start, um, because what we had here, what we, what we, what's still around, that you have to make your safety um, um, cage and, and then you have controllers. And, and also, if you know, Beat Saber, you run against your, your doors or your chairs or tables, many YouTube videos, and that's really what we, we came um, thinking about, how can, we, how can we solve this? And since then, we developed... Um, uh, the, the alpha version is out in January, the beta is out now. A Unity plugin which enables to solve this cage problem um, let's go. Um, because we wanted to solve it. Because what, what we had and tested here as well, gloves as well, it's beautiful, but for us, after this um, experience with location based VR, we thought it's too much technology on the body. We wanted to go uh, no technology on the body, and we thought we will use only hand tracking. And we wanted to have the pot potential, and that's also the big um, differentiator, what no, none of the other companies are offering until now, and we are the only one at the moment that, um, and they're paving the way for us and everyone, like with the spatial anchors, uh, occlusion, that's beautiful and that's important for, for any creator, but what is not possible until now, until, until our um, product, that the virtual assets are automatically placed onto real furniture in a meaning, meaningful manner. That means when you have a scan of a room that on the table next to the exit, here is the kind of like space control board. On the table next to the kitchen is the entrance hall mapped automatically of, of a cave. So you as a creator can build content without knowing the space of the end user. And then at the home or retail, the virtual content will be mapped automatically in an intelligent manner. Um, and that's what we are working on, and it's, I'm very, very happy that all the hardware uh, producers, like headset producers, are running in the same direction. 
meaning uh, pass-through, meaning that you can have a, a very elegant manner yourself go from AR to VR, and that's really what, what we also believe, that it doesn't matter if you have an yeah, AR headset, VR headset, or a smartphone, you should be enabled to take part in this um, new world where virtual skins are mapped in a, in a smart manner over reality. And I want to show you something, a film we did last year. It's a bit of sound, and it looks like a vision film, but it is possible to do exactly that. That you can have, start with a bio biology class at home, hopefully not because of corona, but you are at home, and that it jumps into an escape game, which can start in Berlin. And the same game, um, logic is in Paris or in other cities and in New York and kind of every door is a portal to the next um, adventure and every table is something where you can hide from animals or doesn't have to be always a shooter and um, that's also the thing when I was in China everybody thought VR has to be you have to feel dizzy you have to, there has to be motion sickness but with, with this kind of logic there is no motion sickness because um, every meter in VR is a real meter. And that's really the thing we're working on. And of course, it can, with the system of automatic placement, of smart placement of uh, content, you can also yeah, have cooking class or design. And the, the grade of reality versus virtuality is, uh, lies in the hand of the end user. That's why, we, that's why we think it makes sense if Apple says, or we heard, that, the, that we have a little wheel where you can smoothly be, uh, go between AR, VR. And at the moment, it is, a, of course, a tool for, for normal coders, developers, Unity. Um, but the uh, our big dream is, all, is to have this for everyone. Uh, like an easy um, user interface, but that's a phase two. Um, show you some more examples, what, we, what we're working on. Of course, a bit painful for us, and I bet for everyone here, is uh, always the question of scanning. Because what our core is um, the smart placement of virtual assets over reality, but in order to prove this, you need a digital double, and this must be precise. First, we tried uh, Apple, LiDAR, and then push it to the headset that was semi-precise. Uh, and in order to have a precise digital double, we developed an own hand mapping, which is more precise. Um, and we know very for sure that the automatic scan in the background or gamified scanning will be there very soon. But we are happy that we are independent of whatever scan, automatic scan in the background is there. And what I love so, so much is uh, Unity made an example also, um, Unity slices. We kind of copy that for our demo here. You throw virtuality balls into the, reality balls into the virtuality to, to kind of like uncover reality. That's also so important that you, um, that people see or touch every wall and you see that behind the wall is another wall and, and another world. This is an escape game. We will uh, demo also from tomorrow onwards in uh, the booth 608. So you're all um, uh, invited. Um, that's also, we thought about which games or apps are most um, kind of like um, profit from um, auto adaptive content creation. It's education, that you can rediscover your flat by having a, a game executing or escape games or classical shooters or shopping, this will be a future very um, strong that you walk around and the model is not walking through the table but around, that every surface is a huge iPad where you can then swipe over and buy the uh, yeah, goods in your home and in a playful manner. Um, we also, of course, did some tests regarding Apple user interface design for the future. Um, because we believe this, this seamless uh, switching between an iPad experience to a headset in a, in a very intuitive manner, where, for example, you always, you as a user, 
can save your main board on the main kitchen table, your left uh, menu for shopping on the left wall of your house, that you are, you are the lord of, of your user journey. And I bet Apple uh, is going exactly in that direction, which I really uh, welcome. Um, any questions so far? Any open questions? Yeah. Could you say it come? No, that's the point. The safest, that's the point. As a side effect, it's the safest VR ever. Um, but also, when you start an AR, like mixed reality, and then throw more assets in, it will become VR. And of course, the, the real wall is covered with uh, virtual skin. And of course, we think about how can we differentiate between a virtual skin over a table and a virtual table. Yeah, because you have to, you, you must differentiate, otherwise you run into the real table. Um, this is also important, what we didn't know before, if you work in these outer adaptive content fields, the assets cannot be normal assets. They cannot be rigid like usually. So they have to be parametric. Um, and that means uh, that they, if you have a table uh, over a real table, a new skin, yeah, and entering into a dungeon, and you stretch it on a long table in a Paris mansion, it shall not look bad. And so we're working on stretchable parametric elastic um, assets. And we, we're looking here also for partners who are working on generative AI, 3D asset generation, so we can open up an interface to work with those people. We don't want to invent every world new, so we, we're looking for also for partners that we can have a more easy way and make the real holodeck uh, become a reality, that you jump into your, in your, into your flat and say, make a forest, and then it can happen. But that's, that's also the future, but we're working the par parametric assets we already uh, have the first versions. Um, today, tomorrow also premiere, Sync Reality powered game by our lead developer, Titus, where is he? Titus, hi, yeah, tomorrow premiere of his game. So we, of course, we, in order to prove our point that it's great to have, um, uh, that games adapt to the space of the end user without losing the agency of the, of the creator, of the artist, we had to do our, ourselves, we had to do experiments. Um, and of course, um, Angel's platforms, we, we serve on the, on the shoulders of giants. Yeah? That's important, and we, don't, and we cannot uh, invent everything uh, on our own. And our focus is, the, the, of course, uh, precise scanning, the parametric asset creation, and the, the, ma the main magic is the smart placement of those virtu virtual assets onto real objects. Um, yeah. That's what we are. We have the better version now. We, we work on content because we are all creators. In order to make a point, we look, we look for partners. Of course, we look for strong partners to also we, we admit our seat round because it's really, if you're here too late, or if you, can, you could die trying, yeah? But if you, if you start with this kind of research, we, we spent $2 million last year on, on research to, to do this. Um, if you start late, then the big guys will just uh, kick you off the table. So it's um, risky, but it's, I think it's worthwhile because these kind of like content automatically adapting to the space of the end user uh, will become very big, especially that, that the, all those big headset uh, producers are aligned and running in the, into the same direction. Any more questions or was it uh, open? Yeah. Hello, my question is, um, how many people can engage at one time together? Is there like a max number of people? And then is there one person that creates the world, say for like an educational purpose, and then as people jump in, they're in that world? Or does it change as the spatial changes for uh, location-based type of things? Yeah, great question. Um, multiplayer, of course, is I love multiplayer, but that's also not our, I mean, this is just multiplayer in integration, but uh, it has to be easier for everyone, but endless, of course. Regarding who is the lord of the content, um, I love uh, that you create something in your home and send it to someone, and then 
he sees or she sees in her home the creation of your of your fantasy mapping up in a different manner. For example, we can, you could also do an escape game, and on a small flat you have only three riddles, and then you have spiked to go to visit a friend with a big uh, living room to see five riddles. Which uh, so you you always we always want to spur people to have real contact and and go to other people's houses. Um, that's really I think this can be this user generated content logic can be very strong, but also make it on the B2B level. With, we are working also, we apply for a fund for location-based um, entertainment version of the tool that you have a moderator, uh, focus more on moderate, that you can offer a moderator, a multiplayer, easy multiplayer, and, or, and already better optimized scanning of um, yeah, malls, etc. for, of course, shopping, escape games, and uh, more professional uh, out-of-the-box uh, location-based um, execution because you, you save a lot of money. I know Europa Park, they spend a lot for pop-up escape games and, and they send a coder and a designer to every location and you don't need, with this system, you make it once and you don't need to send a whole crew to the location. It's really the, the good thing also for, for retail and location-based. Um, quick question. I just didn't catch which other platforms you're uh, enabling your SDK for, considering that potentially next week there will be a beautiful release with potentially not Unity in it. Yes, uh, many, many people say this, yeah, Unity and Unreal are, are short before dying because they cannot open more than one app at the same time and uh, that Apple will, with their strong ecosystem, will kick everyone off the table. I wouldn't, yeah. I welcome competition, and, and we, would, we will have to see how we can adapt to the Apple logic, which is great because it's, it has a strong system. But we are definitely, we started hardware and software and uh, hardware and uh, platform agnostic. And also, for example, it's great if you start a game, uh, two people on an iPad and two people on a headset, yeah, that you, uh, like uh, asymmetrical gameplay, the, the strategic p two people on the iPad find the people in the um, battleship, whatever, yeah, and the others with the headset crawl under the kitchen table. So these, these kind of like, and we know phones will be around for some time, so we didn't want to kick out the phone logic. And as long as the phone has a depth sensor or smart um, triangulation of the position, it's welcome in synchronicity li lives, I would say so. Uh, what object does your SDK detect? Could you say it again? What objects, what type of objects does the SDK detect? Ah, okay. So detecting, that's the, uh, the thing, we focus on placement. We are not, and we, are, we master um, the mapping, but the big companies are much better and we want to surf on their shoulder instead. Um, uh, kind of like scanning and uh, categorization of objects. And you see in room plan, Apple, they also only map over round tables, square boxes. So they are, the whole industry is box boxy at the moment. And everything, small, and, and they have, I don't know why, Meta and Apple has a in, inconsistency or no, imprecision of three to five centimeters, which is high, too high for us. But um, and we cannot wait for them to get better. So we have to do our manual thing first, trusting that the industry pushes themselves to get more precise. Um, yeah. So does your system auto reconfigure, like if I move a chair or something, maybe a, yeah, a meter or something? The dream, I mean, uh, think of SpongeBob. We thought of a game SpongeBob for people, and we thought, also thought of non-playing characters come into your room, like a, a dog and a mother without headset. They can, of course, could turn uh, into NPCs uh, because they don't have a headset, but then you need real-time detection, and this is also a thing we don't, the whole network thing, the whole um, latency thing, we ha don't have it in our hands, so we, we bet on the beauty of just sitting down and looking, if you are in London in a small uh, room or in China in a small room, and you look into, onto outside in a concrete wall, but you look through the wall into the jungle, and this beauty is already very strong. So the whole real-time logic and the whole interaction powerhouse thing where you, need, uh, where you do need 
cloud computing and uh, streaming of, let's, if, you, if you talk about 3D asset generation with AI, you need to send it up, generate, and uh, stream it, otherwise the headset will not make it. So these kind of like stress tests for technology-wise is not our thing to solve. Yeah, we would, of course, we would dream of exactly what you just mentioned, but we can only work with what is there and see the beauty until the rest is coming. Don't you like this, that this will happen soon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, please come to, uh, we were in uh, Lisbon in a booth we, we created with IKEA furniture, a uh, living room to, to show the beauty of it. It was very expensive and silly. And now we, we, we had less money and we have we built from the huge Lego blocks a living room. So come and test uh, our stuff tomorrow, it would be great. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a bunch. And if you know seed investors, we need one million to keep afloat. But we, we make also projects um, ourselves with partners, but uh, still it's super research intense what we're doing. Thanks for your attention, for your coming. Oh, no. Here. This is Tease Sa from Saver. Yeah, we, we are applying for a European grant for making a low-code version of Sync Reality, and he is very much focusing on um, education and training. And yeah, uh, that's Tease. And, and Bruno, come, please stand up, also part of our team. He's an architect, first employee of, of Sync Reality, uh, because you need to be an architect to understand the spatial computing logic, and uh, it's really, I'm really happy how far we got here since our startup booth last year, which was like the size of a blanket or something. Yeah, thanks for, for listening. A big round of applause.